Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Embrace. I, uh, my name's Laban. I'm the worship leader here. I invite you to stand with us. We're going to sing a few songs. Um, praise the Lord this morning. Glad you are with us. your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Love the Lord your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And I will love you. And I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. And I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. And I will serve you. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your heart, with all your heart. With all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And I will love the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. The mountains are still being moved. The strongholds are still being loosed. And God, we believe. And yes, we can see. The wonders are still what you do. And bodies are still being raised. And giants are still being slain. And God, we believe. And yes, we can see the wonders are still what you do. And we are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. 
come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. Come and do what you do. Cause we need a move. We need a move. We need a move. We need a move. And mountains are still being moved. And strongholds are still being loosed. And God, we believe that yes, we can see. The wonders are still what you do. The bodies are still being raised. The giants are still being slain. And God, we believe, and yes, we can see. The wonders are still what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. And set our hearts on you. Come and do what you do. Cause we need a move. We need a move. We need a move. We need a move. move. Miracles happen when you move. Healing is coming in this room. Miracles happen when you move. And heaven is coming. Miracles happen when you move. The healing is coming in this room. Miracles happen. When you move, the heaven is coming. The miracles happen when you move. The heaven is coming in this room. The miracles happen when you move. The heaven is coming. And this is a move. We need a move. We need a move. We need a move. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. Come and do what you do. Because we need a move. We need a I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. 
Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Cause your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Sing that again together. Cause your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Fear and all anxiety. Every soul held captive by depression. I speak Jesus. Cause your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. Cause your name is power, your name healing your name is life break every stronghold shine through the shadows burn like a fire shout Jesus from the mountain Jesus from the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. We shout Jesus from the mountain, Jesus from the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Your name is power, because your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire Cause your name is power Your name is healing Your name is life Break every stronghold Shine through the shadows Burn like a fire I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. If you'll bow your heads with me. God, thank you so much for another day. We thank you. 
that you are with us, that you walk with us through the good times and the bad times. God, we thank you that you don't leave us alone. For many of us in the room, I know that we're bringing lots of difficulties and and hard things with us this morning, And, and Lord, I just pray that you would meet us where we're at, that you would lift our burdens, that you would be our friend, that you would help us, Lord, to to feel and to know your powerful presence this morning. God, thank you for loving us, and we thank you that we can feel your love surrounding us and moving in this space this morning. We thank you for your spirit, that your spirit is hovering in us and through us and around us, and that, God, we can be changed through encountering your presence. Lord, we love you so much, and we thank you for loving us. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, it's good to be together this morning. Uh, My name is John, and I'm the lead pastor at the church, and just want to say welcome to each and every one of you. I'm glad to be back with you after taking off a couple of weeks. Um, Well, I'm glad that you're happy to see me, too. Um, We're going to take just a moment to... uh, share with one another. We do this every week. We call this our time of gratitude and lament. And so what we do is we just form little groups, uh, maybe three or four or five people. Um, Just find some folks around you. If you're sitting kind of far away, just maybe move over to a group that's near you. Introduce yourself. And then also, if you want to share something you're grateful for this morning, and then if you have a lament, you can share that as well. And so a lament is just something that uh, maybe is not going so well in your life, something you see in the world that's upsetting you, something you want to protest this morning, you're welcome to share that. Also, after you're done sharing, um, when someone's finished, you can just thank them for sharing and let the next person go. Uh, Those of you online, I'd love to hear from you as well um, in the comments, so I'd love if y'all would uh, share your gratitude and lament there as well. So why don't we just uh, get in some groups right now, and I'll call you back together in just a moment.
If you want to take about a minute or so, uh, so if someone hasn't shared, then make sure they get a chance to, and I'll call you back in just a moment. All right, if y'all want to bring your attention back up this way, that would be wonderful. I hope you got to maybe meet someone new or reconnect with someone you haven't seen for a bit. I think that this time is a really special time of connecting. I'm going to go ahead and highlight some things online. Y'all may not know this, but we have a pretty good crew with us online each and every week. And so um, those of you who are connecting on Facebook Live, uh, y'all are just as much a part of this as the ones in the room. And so we're so grateful that you can continue to stay connected when you're sick or out of town or just aren't able to be here. So let me, uh, let me share some of the things that folks shared online. Um, Dan Adkins likes to participate in person and online at the same time. So, you know, Dan... I'm, I think he just wants me to read what he says, you know. Uh, Dan shared that uh, my gratitude is that uh, John is back, that is me, uh, with us this morning. My lament is for our nation uh, seeming rent asunder. Yes, things are not well um, here at home in America. So thank you, Dan. I lament as well along with you. Uh, Dustin Pugel is grateful that Beckett and I had pretty mild cases of covid um, Beckett was just about asymptomatic, and for the vaccines, that surely made it easier on, um, on us. Lamenting again all the folks who have died from this awful disease. Yeah, we're grateful you're doing okay, Dustin and Beckett, and thank you for sharing that. Uh, Jennifer Lewis says, I have gratitude for a safe home and the ability to join church online while dealing with car trouble that, got me, that has me grounded uh, for the moment. So yes, we're gra- grateful you can participate as well. Um, Deb Singleton says, our gratitude is getting to spend some unexpected time with our eldest son and for the healing he's had in his life. That is wonderful. I'm grateful for the praying people at Embrace and lamenting the continued division in our country. Thank you, Deb. We are celebrating and lamenting with you um, this morning. Sue Crone is giving praise for travel mercies on a long uh, return trip to Kentucky Lamenting physical health issues and loneliness of several classmates. Um, Thank you, Sue, for sharing that. Jessica Young is grateful to see God in those around me. Uh, That is beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Lindsay Trent is thankful for family time this weekend and lamenting continued division and abuses within the American church and praying for unity uh, through diversity. Yeah, thank you. We are celebrating and lamenting with you on those things also. Pastor Tanya is grateful for some good time with Pastor Christina this morning, thinking through the future of Embrace and some of our hopes. It was a sweet time. Also grateful for so many visitors in the house today, lamenting the flooding in Pakistan and the effects of global warming we're seeing as the earth groans. Thank you, Tanya. We are are grateful and celebrating with you also, and we are lamenting as well. Just the, the kind of ecological um, and climate devastation we're seeing across our world right now. Um, We can do better. And we we lament alongside those who are suffering. Um, Thank you all for sharing. Um, I'll just say I'm I'm glad to be back. Thank you for all the 
text and, and phone calls and meals and all the things you've provided for me and for Laura as we have been going through this time of grieving uh, over the last couple of weeks as we're grieving the loss of uh, our first foster son, Chosen. Um, and I'm just so grateful to have a church that loves and supports us. Um, and so thank you for, for all of that. Um, I'm grateful to be back and just know it's going to be a long road um, of grief and just getting through this. And, and so I appreciate the continued support from each and every one of you. I want you to know that um, I do appreciate when you bring it up. Uh, you're, you're more than willing to ask how we're doing. Uh, I, I like it. Um, when you do that, um, you can mention Chosen's name. We want to remember them, remember him and hold him in our hearts as we continue to move forward. And so I'll be all right, uh, but uh, just thank you so much uh, for all the love and support you've given me and also for the just willingness of all the leaders here, for Christina and for Rick Bard and Rick Reams for stepping up and leading our services the past few weeks. Um, for Rick, going to preach today for us. It's just been nice to have some space just to be and to spend some time with Laura and just to try to process and, and get through this. So um, love you all. So that's all I've got to say. I'm not going to say any more. <laughs> So I do have some announcements this morning to share. When you come in the church, there's always an announcement sheet on the table. Sometimes there's sign-up sheets and all sorts of stuff. I encourage you to check that out every time you come in. Uh, they change every week, and so I encourage you all to pick one of those up. Just read through it because there may be something on there that you're interested in knowing about. Also, there are connect cards in your pews um, just right there with the, the hymnals. There should be pens there. I love when you all fill those out, even if you're a long time member of the church, I love when y'all fill these out and put down prayer requests or anything you'd like to update us on in your life. You can put those in the box there by the door or the one in the back. Um, you can also hand that to a pastor if you would like. You can also put an offering uh, or a financial gift in those boxes as well, and you can also give online on our website, embraceyourcity.com. I have some really important things, announcements to share, so I want y'all to listen very carefully, all right? So next week, there's a couple of things that I need to share about next week. First off, the, the Wonder Room uh, starts back up next week. So y'all can clap, parents. I know y'all are excited about it. Kids in the back, I know y'all are excited too. Uh, we have a good crew in the back right now hanging out, um, kids in the pews. We, we love all of our children in our church, and we're so excited that they'll be able to start back up the Wonder Room um, next Sunday. If you have any questions about that, you can talk to Christina Pastor Christina, you can wave. Y'all know who Christina is. Uh, she can answer all your questions um, about the Wonder Room. Also next Sunday, uh, this is a little bit short notice, but we're doing this next Sunday, so I hope that some of y'all can come. But we're going to have uh, what we call our Embrace Orientation Lunch. And basically, it's just a time to get together to orient people to our church. And so if you feel um, like you are new here, or you feel like you don't know a lot of people, or you feel like you don't know a lot about our church, and you would like to learn more, to meet some of our leaders, to meet some other people maybe in a similar situation, then we want to invite you to stay after church next Sunday for lunch. Um, it is completely free to you, and we're just going to have some time for some of our, our long-term leaders who are leading some different ministries to share with, about what they do, and also uh, meet you all, and then you'll have a chance to meet each other as well, and also eat some good food. And so if you would like to come to that, we would love for you to RSVP uh, for that, okay? And so there are sign-up sheets um, here in the well, at the table in the back um, at that entrance and then also the entrance over here. I would love for you to sign up and let us know if you're coming so we know roughly about how many people uh, will be there. You can also email us. You can email uh, Rachel in the office, rachel at embraceyourcity.com. And I think there's an online sign-up sheet, correct? That went out through email and should be, um, if, not, if it's not, we'll make sure it's in our Embrace Church Community Facebook group, all right? Does that make sense? Um, even if you've been coming a while and you're like, I still feel kind of new here and I don't really know a lot of people, I want to learn some things, come. Uh, we would love for you to be there uh, to be a part of that. So in two weeks, uh, something exciting is happening. We're starting our last series in our Bible uh, classes that we've been doing throughout the year. We started uh, with an overview of the Bible. Um, back in the kind of winter, early spring. And then we moved into a history, kind of interpreting the Bible, history, a little bit of history of Christianity, uh, which, you know, 
uh, we had a, a really good crew there. Julie's just geeking out over it even after the fact. She, she just loved it. Her and Jackie both sitting together, best friends right there. Um, they taught us, and then Dustin Pugel was a part of that also. And now we're going to actually take a lot of the background stuff that we've learned, and then we're going to use some of that plus some new Bible study tools to actually study the Bible, which we're really excited about. And so we had a team of people that met to talk about how to approach this class recently, and there's some really good folks that are going to help lead this. And so we're going to have some teaching, but also some workshop time where you're actually going to get into biblical text and start to apply the tools and the principles you've learned. And hopefully you'll come away feeling much more empowered to open up the Bible and to read it and to study it yourself. And because I know a lot of you come to church and you're like, I love the things we're talking about here, but I want to be able to do this myself, be able to study it myself. And this is what we're hoping to give you tools to learn how to do. And so I would love for you to sign up for that also so that we can know who you are, have your email, so that we can send out some updates and any important information about that. Sign-up sheets are in the same places that I just mentioned. Now I'm going to invite uh, Brenda Venegas to come to the front. Let's give Brenda a hand as she comes up to the front. Brenda is the Senior Program Director at Common Good, and she is going to share a little bit about... uh, a need that they have at Common Good, our partner ministry in our basement that does work in our community with students and families. Hello. Um, could you, is this good? All right. um, well, hi, I, my name is Brenda Venegas, like John said. I work with Common Good. And right now, we're, this week, we're, we're gonna, we're, we are going to start um, our after-school program, which is very exciting. And I come here to ask two things. One is if you can pray for our first week of program that it goes smoothly, that we, are, we have our students come back and have a time for a safe space and to build connection. And two is to, we're recruiting volunteers. We're really heavily needed, needing volunteers to commit to one week, one day per week for a semester. Um, and as a mentor, um, you would come and eat, share a meal with them, connect. Um, have free time, help them with homework, and enjoy a club time activity with them, and then more free time. Um, Mainly just to kind of build connections and be a role model to younger students here in the community. And we are located in the basement of Embrace, and we're we're very grateful for Embrace that allows us to share that space. And um, so we're really needing volunteers. If you have any questions about how to become a volunteer, I'll be here at the end of service um, just ready to answer any questions and we would love for you all to come and connect with younger students in the north like north side of Lexington community um yeah so thank you for allowing me to come and make this announcement thank you Brenda one of our values at our church is that we are neighborhood focused and and you know not all churches are. I've heard churches talk about we are community wide. We got people coming from everywhere, and we certainly have people coming from everywhere at our church. But our first kind of focus is our our neighborhood that surrounds our church, and that's where we want to focus most of our energy and our outreach and our kind of witness here in our neighborhood. And so Common Good is a wonderful way. Um, and a partner for us that really helps us live into that vision. And so if you've been coming here and you're like, I'd love to know more people in the community, I'd love to get involved in our neighborhood um, more and get to know families here, Common Good is a great way to get plugged in and kind of live into that value uh, that we have as a church. And I, I, I don't know for sure, but I have a feeling it'll be your favorite afternoon of the week if you're able to mentor uh, with the students because they are wonderful. And I, my time mentoring there has impacted me and bless me probably far more than I've blessed anybody else because it is just a powerful experience. And we have such wonderful students um, in our neighborhood uh, that just are a gift to to our church. And so I encourage you to talk to Brenda about that after the service. Um, The final thing I just want to mention is we do still need food pantry donations. Um, We uh, give out food every Monday at the end of our night. Uh, We have a meal, and we have prayer, we have a worship service, and then those who need food, we give that out. And I'm just going to be straight with you all. People are really suffering right now. I don't know if you all have noticed, but there are a lot of people out and about throughout the community all over Lexington that are really, really struggling. And we have, I've been here for now since 2006. I've worked at this church. And, and I would say it may be the most that we've ever had people who come here on a daily basis desperately in need of help. 
Um, people are really, really suffering right now. And so uh, this is a small way that you can help just by picking up some food. Um, there's, it's really spelled out for you what we need. And so I encourage you all to bring some food for our food pantry. That's a way we can bless people as they stop by throughout the week and on Monday night. So um, I'd strongly encourage you to consider that. If you have any questions, you can talk to me or Rachel about that um, after church. So that's all the announcements I have for today. I'm going to go invite uh, Rick Reams to the front. Let's give Rick a hand as he comes forward. Rick is uh, a leader at our church. Um, he's, he's really one of our pastors at our church. He's, he's stepped into that role over the last uh, many months, and um, Rick has served as a minister in other contexts in the past and came here as just a lay leader, and, and he's just been willing to step up and do whatever we've ever needed Rick to do. And so um, I wasn't feeling like I could preach this week, and so I texted Rick just a little bit ago and didn't give him a whole lot of notice uh, and asked him if he'd be willing to preach. And first thing he says is certainly, for sure. <laughs> and Rick's that kind of guy that he will jump in and, and do whatever's needed. And he, he, you know, Christine and I were talking about Rick this past week and just how Rick is just such a prayerful person. And, and we just know that when Rick preaches, he puts in so much prayer and really listens to God's voice um, and really asks God, what is it that God is putting on his heart that he wants to share with you all today? And so uh, Rick inspires me in that way uh, to, to not just read books, but to, to read the Spirit and listen to what God is trying to say. And so um, I'm going to turn it over to Rick, and he's going to share a word with us this morning, and, and we'll take communion and worship, and we'll be done. So. A couple of things before I began. Begin. That was a nice way of John saying that Rick doesn't read books. <laughs> and it's true, but I just thought that was a very nice way to say that. I also appreciated Rick's message last week. Debbie, if I don't have the mic up close enough, if you'll let me know, I appreciate that. When Rick started preaching last week, he took his watch off and he put it right here. And I always love when preachers do that. I don't do that for two reasons. One... It doesn't really matter. I won't look at it anyhow. And the one time I did that, I left it on the podium and preached in another city. And it was there until I went back. So I've got to watch that. Um, the last thing I'm going to say is, Christina, you win the, the award for packing the pew this morning. I'm impressed with how many family members. If y'all would just give Christina's family a hand for being here. We love Christina, and we love having you all here with us this morning. The last thing I want to say before I start the message is to our online folks. The last time I preached here, on Monday I got a text from a friend that said, hey, have you watched your message yet? And that's not a good thing when you get a text from a friend. And I was wondering, what in the world was he talking about? Well, come to find out, when I preach, I roam a lot. Two-thirds of last time's message, I wasn't on screen at all. So I know if you came in in the middle of that, you wondered where in the world. My wife will tell you it was not the voice of God speaking, but this morning I'm staying put. As you can tell, I like to have fun. And this is a place that allows me to do that. My wife Stephanie and I have been members here since last December. We started attending right before the pandemic came. We love this church and we love its mission. I love the study we're doing this year. A year with Jesus. And I'm going to be honest with you, in my naivete, I thought this would be an uplifting time. Every week, we're going to learn more and more about this Jesus. You see, it hasn't always been that easy. John and Christina have both talked about that. This can be challenging. Luke has some challenging words to say. Jesus himself speaks in ways and speaks on topics that surprise us. I was in Florida when John texted me to ask me to preach, and of course my answer was yes. And I didn't ask him what the scripture was, because I knew I could look it up in the lectionary. Right after I texted back yes, I looked up the scripture. And I thought to myself, gee, John, I appreciate you letting me preach on that this week. But what I want you to know is John and Christina both gave me a lot of leeway. 
They said, I could preach on it or I could preach on something different. Now, I'm hard-headed, and my wife will tell you that. And I believe when I start something, I need to finish it. So if we've been preaching about a year with Jesus, I wanted to continue on preaching about it. But you know, with everything that's gone on with our church, John mentioned, he and Laura, what they've gone through. I've had illness. We've had other people in our church. You may be going through a tough time right now. This scripture is tough sometimes to look at. We'll get to that later. I know everyone's wondering what in the world are we talking about. But what I want you to know is, as I prayed about it, God really, really put on my heart that this was the scripture that I would preach on. And he put on my heart that this is actually a scripture of hope if you look at it in the right way. So what I want to do first of all is kind of talk to you about the way that I, I interpret the Bible. And the first way I interpret the Bible is with the use, parts of speech that are being used. And what I want to talk about this morning, Christina and I talked about this on Monday night. We talked about biblical hyperbole. It's a big word, biblical hyperbole. John, you're going to love this. E.W. Bullinger is a well-renowned Anglican clergyman, a biblical scholar, and a theologian in the 1800s. He wrote a book, Figures of Speech Used in the Bible. I didn't read the book, but I am quoting from the book. (laughs) It says that hyperbole is when more is said than is literally meant. Another thing he talks about is it's, it's exaggeration. It's used throughout the Bible. A familiar story that some of you may know is in John 4, 39. When Jesus was speaking to the Samaritan woman, and she went and told everyone, he told me all I ever did. Well, let's think about this. With time being a factor and with everything going on, I'm sure Jesus didn't mention every event in this woman's life. But what he was doing was she was using biblical hyperbole to let people know and to get her point You see, we use it today, ourselves, especially as teenagers and and even other people. Have you ever had your teenager here ever said this, Mom, Dad, everyone is going to the party. Well, let's be honest, not everyone is going. But you want to make a point. You want that hyperbole to get there. The second thing I look at is to consider, to consider how this scripture needs to be interpreted according to who wrote it or who's speaking it. And let me kind of explain what I mean by that. Have you ever sent a text or an email to someone and they read it differently than you meant them to read it? They took that angrily or something like that. That's kind of how we have to look at Scripture. We have to interpret the person that is saying it. Now, Scripture is hard because we don't know these people. If someone sends you a text that you know, you can kind of say, oh, I know them. That's not what they meant. But what I do with the Scripture is I look at the character of the person that's speaking the words. Okay? Now, today, the person speaking these words are Jesus, is Jesus. And Jesus, we know his character. We know who he is. So this brings me to today's scripture. I want you to remember the definition of hyperbole. I want you to consider the demeanor of the one speaking, Jesus. And what I want us to do is I want us to climb into Jesus' lap and think of him teaching us in a loving manner a lesson that he needs us to learn. So Luke 14, 25 and 26 says this, Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. Can you see how when I first read this, I really appreciated the opportunity to preach this message? But you know, we need to look deeper into what this scripture, to me, is talking about. I see this as biblical hyperbole. I see this as another way that hyperbole is used. 
hyperbole can be used to get your attention. And let's be honest, it's the very first thing it says, large crowds were traveling with Jesus. Don't you think this got their attention? I know a lot of you looked up when I read this. It gets our attention. But what I want you to know is this is hyperbole. Because in ten, the Ten Commandments, it says, honor your mother and your father. Do you think Jesus is refuting this commandment? No, of course not. He's using, he's using this to be, make his point in a more dramatic way. What I think Jesus is saying here is, get your priorities straight. And let me tell you how I learned this. At a very young age, I can't remember what happened. I don't remember the circumstance. All I can remember is my mom decided it was a great time for me to learn a lesson from her. She sat me down and she looked at me and she said, Rick, you need to learn this now. My priorities in life are God, your dad, and then you and your sister. God, your dad, and you and your sister. At the time, I thought that was harsh. I'm supposed to be way up there. But you see, she was saying the same thing that Jesus wants us to say. He wants us to be at the, he wants him to be at the top of our priority list. Nothing should come before him. No one or no thing has a higher priority in our lives than Jesus. Jesus uses hate as a hyperbole. I truly believe what Jesus is saying is I want you to love me more than anything or anyone else. And that includes ourselves. Because he says in scripture, ourselves. Why do you think this is? Why do you think he's saying this to us? Well, you know, as I look at the list of those people that he listed off, I found one thing in common. These are all human beings. And we know, as human beings, we will let each other down. We will let ourselves down. But you see, in Hebrews 13, 5, it says this, Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself said, I will never leave nor forsake you. This, my friends, to me is the first part of hope. Others will abandon you. Others will leave you. They will forsake you. But hold tight to this truth. He will not. He is here when your world seems to be falling apart. He is there when nothing makes sense. Sometimes the hardest thing is, even when you don't see him or feel him, he is there. Friends, there's hope in that. Let's continue on. In verse 27, it says this, And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. We hear this a lot. Pick up your cross, follow me. Jesus talks about this. What I want to look at real closely, though, is the second part of that scripture. Follow me. You see, if I'm following someone, I'm going exactly where they've been. I've got to follow them. My wife is the world's worst person at following you when she's driving. My wife follows you a mile and a half to two miles behind. And she's nodding her head. She knows it's true. She even says that. I'm terrible at following, but what I'm, doing, what I'm saying here is that we're going wherever Jesus has been. The thing I love about this is Jesus isn't asking us to go anywhere, that he hasn't been himself. We are following in our Savior's footsteps. I played basketball pretty much my entire life until I graduated from high school. And in high school, we would do something where they would say, hit the line at end of practice. And what that meant was we'd get to the end of the court, and what we'd do is we'd run fours, up and back four times, okay? And after two or three times, they'd time it, and whoever was the slowest or whoever was the fastest got to leave. Well, if you look at me, you can tell I'm not the fastest, and I never was. 
So I would keep on running fours until they finally would just say, okay, we're done with practice. But you see, my frustration was I wanted to yell at my coach, why don't you come out here and run one? I bet I can beat you. But I never said that. But you see, that's what following, Jesus set the example for us. He's not asking us to do anything that we haven't done. We're going to be singing a hymn later, and I've come to find out this morning it's a very Baptist hymn. I did not know that, but it's very familiar to me because I grew up in the Baptist church. And it's called, Wherever He Leads, I'll Go. And these are the words, Wherever He Leads, I'll Go, Wherever He Leads, I'll Go, I'll Follow My Christ Who Loves Me So, Wherever He Leads, I'll grow. Go. He drew me closer to His side, I sought His will to know, and in that will... I now abide wherever he leads, I'll go. Our hope is in the fact that we follow him wherever he goes. Does that mean we're going to be called to some difficult places? The answer is yes. Because the thing I love about my Jesus is he goes to difficult places. And when he goes there, he wants us to follow him there. He wants us to follow him because we love him enough to go wherever he goes. Let's continue on. Verse 28 through 30 says this, Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundations and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying, this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Isn't it just like Jesus in the middle of something just to throw in a story? You're like, hold on, I'm, I'm following you, I picked up my cross, and now we're talking about building a tower. Jesus, what, what are you doing? You know, the thing I love about Jesus is he does that. He gets our attention. We're trying to figure out what is he saying here. So to me, what he's talking about here is we need to plan ahead. You see, friends, before the sickness comes, before the disaster strikes, before the broken relationship happens, before your world falls apart, you need to have Jesus. You see, the third part of hope comes in this. If you have Jesus at the top of your priority, you know you don't face these circumstances alone. And you know whom to turn to when all else fails. About a month ago, or a little longer than that, John had me come up and talk about the impact this church had on me and Stephanie during my illness. And I told you all, it was the strangest time in my life because I could not pray. All I could do is call out on the name of Jesus. And you see, I think that's what this is talking about. When you can't do anything else, call out on Jesus. He's there. He's there. He's never left you. He's never forsaken you. If he's at the top of your priority list, it's going to be okay. The end may not come as you want it, but he's there with you. He will be there. My Aunt Barbara, Barbara Thompson, died at the age of 91 about a month ago. I love this lady immensely. She is one of the funniest person that I have ever met. And I won't tell you stories because I can't tell them on this pulpit. But she had some stories to tell. At her funeral, however, I was able to share some of those stories with the crowd. And they knew her. and They laughed. And we laughed and we had a good time. But something happened at the funeral that I didn't know was going to happen. You see, my cousin Donna had found a letter that my aunt had written to God in about 1990. No one had ever seen the letter. No one had ever read that letter except for my aunt. It was tucked away somewhere in her house, and my cousin found it. And when I read the scriptures after John texted me, I texted my cousin, I said, can you send me a copy of that letter? Because it's a beautiful view of what I'm talking about. So my Aunt Barbara says this, Dear God, you have blessed me so much. You know what I've been through in these last five years. All my family have died but you know how I feel and how I hurt. You have never left me, even though at times I have felt very far away from you. I know that you didn't move. God, the greatest loss I have suffered has been the loss of my husband. 
But even in that, you had the greatest influence on me in my life. You have provided people to step into my life at just the right moment. You have shown me through them that you care for me. And even now, God, you are giving to me an awareness of what I must do to start over alone with a new life. You gave time and allowed my husband to live long enough to seek your face, and now he is with you. I am so grateful for that assurance and that I will be there one day also. I will be thrilled to see my mother again. Let me remain faithful until then. My Uncle Jack died in 1985. Her mother was murdered a very short time after that in a terrible event. You see, with all of that fresh on her mind, Did you hear the hope in her letter? Did you hear that she held on till the very end? Now I'm going to admit to you, she never thought she would live as long as she did. Again, think of this timing. He died in 1985, and she was without him for that long. One of the last conversations I had with her was she said, Rick, you know, you and Stephanie have been married a lot longer than your Uncle Jack and I were married. The hurt was there, but the hope never ended. She taught me the fourth lesson of hope. Though we may not understand why things happen, we know that Jesus is faithful to be with us no matter how much anger or doubt we may have. He's big enough to handle it and only wants to love us through it. And hear this, friends, because we are his priority. Do you know it's okay to be mad at God? It is. It's okay to shake your fist. It's okay to scream. It's okay to holler. It's okay to cry. Because we serve a big God. And as a parent, you know if you have children, you're going to face this too. I've sadly told my mother before, my father before, that I hated them and all this. But they still love me. And that's the God we serve. But what I want us to see is the reason that that happens is because we are his priority. Each and every one of us. He doesn't love some more than he loves others. He's not more disappointed in some than he is in others. What I want you to hear is he is there. We've had a tough year at Embrace. But he is there. He is here with us. I want us to look at one more scripture. 1 John 4, 19 says this, We love because he first loved us. Why are we to make Jesus our priority? Because of his love for us. I titled this sermon, A Tough Year with Jesus. And that's a pretty good title, I think. But it hit me on Thursday. I was talking to my mom who lives in an assisted living facility. She's battling Alzheimer's, but she's really clear right now. So she likes to know what's going on in all of our lives. So I talked to her about this sermon a little bit. And I told her what the title was. A tough year with Jesus. But then it hit me. You know, don't we have an amazing Savior? Who, whenever John and Christina came up with this year with Jesus knew the exact year we were going to have. What better time to have a year with Jesus than this? And I don't know about you, but I'd rather spend a tough year with Jesus than a second without him. You can say amen. Thank you. I appreciate that. Usually when I'm sitting out there, I'm the one that says amen. But but I want you to know that tough times are going to come. Tragedies will happen. You know, sometimes when that phone rings, you're not going to know what's going to be said. And I've had those phone calls. And we've had those phone calls in this church. You don't know what's going to happen. But what I want you to know is through this entire year with Jesus, we're being constantly reminded of how much he loves us. Friends, he's there. He wants to be at the top of your priority. Let me ask you a question that only you can answer. 
Is he there? Is he your top priority today? The thing I love about Jesus is if he's not, that's very easy to change. Because he doesn't look down and say, nope, I was number two, I was number three, I was number whatever. It's too late. My Aunt Barbara talked about my Uncle Jack. He never knew Jesus until right before he died. A couple years, he got to know Jesus. And the amazing thing was when he came to, before Jesus, Jesus didn't say, eh, you know what? 53 years without me? Sorry. It's too late. No. It's time. There's time. But today is that day. Very easy to do. Jesus, be my priority. And then wait and see what Jesus does. So today's the day to change that list, to shuffle that list. Friends, I can almost guarantee you that we're going to have, continue to have a tough year with Jesus until December 31st. January the 1st, sadly, probably nothing's going to change. We're still going to have tough years. But we face those tough years because we know who holds us. And that's Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This morning, we're going to come to communion. And I don't think there's a better way to be reminded every week about your priorities. If you don't have communion, there should be some in the back. Someone will bring that in. and Just raise your hand, and we'll be happy to get that for you. But you see, I don't come from a tradition that does communion every Sunday. I come from a tradition that we did communion once a quarter, okay? And it was usually on Sunday nights. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, but it, it, it kind of surprises me now because that's when the least people would attend. And so when we first started doing this every week, I was kind of like, ah, I don't know, does this cheapen it? Does, it? does it make it less meaningful? But then it, it hit me. At the start of every week, I redo my priorities, and this is how I know who's number one. Because of our Savior, who gladly, freely went to the cross for each of us. He died with our names on his list. And I know, without a doubt, he'd do it again. So every week when we take communion, I want us to remember that commitment he made to us. And I want us to make the commitment back to him. Jesus, you are my number one priority. So if you'll go ahead and open the top. I got smart this morning and opened it before I got up here. I've struggled with this a number of times. This is the body of Christ broken for you, take and eat. Okay, I spoke too soon. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. As often you do it, do it in remembrance of me. We're going to have a final hymn. I'm going to be sitting over here on the side. If you'd like prayer, come up here. We have Tanya in the back. I know sometimes people are much more comfortable going in the back to pray. This is a no judgment zone. If you need to come up here and pray at the altar on your own, you're fine. I will not bother you. I'm just going to be waiting over there. Friends, let's worship him. Let's sing wherever he leads. I'll go and let's meet. Take up my cross and follow me. I heard my master say, I gave my life to ransom me. Surrender all today. Wherever he leads, I'll go. Who? Mm-hmm.
loves me so, wherever he leads, I'll go. being here this morning. A couple of reminders before you leave. If you're interested in mentoring at Common Good, then talk to Brenda. She's over here before you leave. Also, if you're interested in the Embrace Orientation Lunch or the Bible uh, class that we're doing, sign up for those at the sign-up sheets on your way out the door. Um, As you're able, let's all stand together for the benediction. May the love of God the Father The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. Go in God's peace. We'll see you next time.